Let me say how very pleased I am to join you this afternoon at this commissioning of the Westlink iconic villa. And there are those who may ask uh, why this particular private housing development is one that I needed to be here personally uh, to commission. The reason is more than one, and I'm sure you've heard already some of it. But the first is that this is a, this is a project that demonstrates what we as an administration, the federal government, has preached since 2015. It's a project that tells two important stories. One is a story of success of local entrepreneurship and forward-looking development finance. Local entrepreneurship, of course, these are diaspora friends, and forward-looking development finance in uh, the body of the Odua Investments Limited. The first part of that story is that the Nigerian diaspora has a crucial role to play in investments in our economy. And that the investment prospects in our economy are great, are great. And though it may require some sacrifice, the rewards are well worth it. As you've heard from uh, the CEO of uh, the fourth, uh, ch chapter four investments, in March 2015, just after the APC won the general elections, I was in the United Kingdom meeting with uh, Nigerians in diaspora. Several business persons were present at that meeting at the Marriott Hotel in Kilburn in London. Mr. Shams Ogumwewa uh, says that I may have forgotten that meeting, but that uh, he definitely remembered. But I, I will show you a video which tells you that I not only remember the meeting, I also recorded the meeting. <laughs> so now this is that meeting. If you look at this video, this is that meeting, and that I think is you right there. As you can see, this is a much younger looking me as well. <laughs> And this uh, happened in Kilburn on that occasion where we met at the Marriott uh, Hotel. And thereafter, the, there, after the meeting, we had a, a discussion, which is what you're uh, looking at up, up here. And after that discussion is what I believe um, led to your decision to come to Nigeria to invest. On that occasion, I think we encouraged ourselves that it was important for them to bring back their skills and capital back home and to partner with the incoming APC government to develop Nigeria. After that event, I had a discussion again with uh, the event, of course, uh, was the one that I referred to. We had that discussion at uh, the Mayo Hotel, and he expressed a very keen interest, Mr. Shams Ogumiwa, expressed a very keen interest in coming back home to invest in real estate. I believe it was sometime after that, going by the story, that he and others in the uh, Chapter 4 investment company came together to develop this project. They kept me informed through a mutual contact, another Nigerian uh, from the diaspora, Mr. Muiwa Uduni, who, by the way, returned to Nigeria shortly after this meeting and is now working as a director at the Bureau of Public Enterprises uh, back there in Abuja. The road to raising capital, as you've heard, was rough, but they kept at it through the year. But the breakthrough appears to have been by their coming across Odua Investments Limited. And Odua Investments started itself, as you know, we've all heard the story of Odua Investments Limited. It started as a development company in the golden era of development in the Western region. At that time, of course, as you know, Chief Obafe Miaulo was premier of the Western region. Odua Investments Limited at the time birthed several industries, real estate investments, etc. But in later years, its fortunes deteriorated, especially during military rule, until in recent years, when the governors of the Southwest states, inheritors of the illustrious legacy of the Western region then, under the premiership of uh, Papa Obafemi Aulo, 
decided to turn over the management of the company to seasoned and tested professionals and business persons who, have, who were given a completely free hand to run the affairs of the company. So it is the new and greatly improved Odua investment which we see today and which brought uh, the vision of our diaspora investors, Chapter 4 Estates Management Limited, UK, to build what we have here today. So the story of the West Link iconic housing units here in Alakia, Badu, is a story of the triumph of ideas and a vision of private enterprise development and capital working seamlessly together. There's a lot that we can do in housing in Nigeria. There's a significant deficit, somewhere between 17 and 20 million houses is the deficit that we are told we have, which should ordinarily be a major economic opportunity, not just for house ownership, but also for the many jobs and manufacturing opportunities that housing brings. The missing link is not the market. There is a market for, it, for, for housing, as we've heard from uh, the Secretary to Government of Ogun State. 1,500 housing units snapped up very quickly. And this is not necessarily low-cost housing. The, the, the missing link is also not the number of ideas for private development. There are so many ideas for private development. The missing link is housing finance. It is affordable mortgages. That is the missing link. Social housing and affordable mortgages is what we need today. Every developed economy has had to develop, usually with government support and mortgage schemes that are affordable. So what needs to be done is that government must provide the capital to de-risk single-digit mortgage lending by the banks. And when I say government, not just the federal government, but also state governments, the United States with all its free market protestations, in 1968 established the Federal National Mortgage Association, which is commonly called the Fannie Mae. This is a US government-sponsored enterprise. And since 1968, it has become a publicly traded company. So the US government had to intervene to de-risk lending, housing finance, even in the US, despite all the talk about private capital, about free markets, etc. There's also Freddie Mac in the US. The Federal Home Loan Mortgage Corporation is also a publicly traded government enterprise created in 1970 to expand the secondary market for mortgages in the US. So the role of government is crucial. There is no way we can escape government putting in significant funding and putting it in smartly in order to de-risk the kind of capital that then becomes lendable to those who are doing uh, housing projects such as this today. We started that process in our Housing for Jobs program under the Economic Sustainability Plan. The Economic Sustainability Plan was the federal government's response to uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and the, and the aftermath. The Family Homes Fund was the arrowhead for the first phase. So the CBN in that arrangement was to provide the intervention fund for mortgage finance through the Family Homes Fund. Part of that fund was provided, but not what was adequate to get the fund to the stage where we thought it would get to. And we're still working on that program. But there must also be affordable private sector funding for housing. So we must commend Odua for providing the support for the project. The future is bright if we stick to the vision of providing de-risking funds supported with development finance funding, such as from Odua. Private capital is also going to be very important. But I think that it's very crucial that governments and private sector see this as, as an important investment opportunity and also as an important development opportunity. Mass housing is crucial. We cannot do without mass housing. We started the mass housing project also under the Family Homes Fund. Some of the governments that have done exceptionally well in mass housing, and I'm not talking about affordable housing, but mass housing. The Borno State Government, for example, partnered with us on the mass housing program through, through the Family Homes Fund. 
And today they've done 10,000 units of mass housing, 10,000 units of mass housing. So it is entirely possible for us to do mass housing on the scale that we need to do it in order to make up the deficit. It's also entirely possible for us to do uh, affordable housing, housing that's a bit more middle class, and make it affordable for the middle classes, for, the, for people in the civil service, for teachers, and for private business people through the de-risking facilities that the federal government and state governments can provide. So today we congratulate the management and staff of Chapter 4 and Nodua Investment Limited on this landmark investment. But not just for this landmark investment, but for the hope that this project gives us for the future of housing in Nigeria. I commend you all and I thank you very, very much for seeing to it that not only did we talk about this, but that we actually made it happen. Thank you very much. God bless you.